We thank you so much for uh, coming out today here at Lawyers Mall here in the state capital of Annapolis. My name is Faraji Muhammad. I serve as one of the co-coordinators for Young Leaders for Peace of the American Friends Service Committee. It is certainly a pleasure and an honor for us to be a part of this great coalition of organizations that are standing against issues of injustice on many, many different levels. And we know that it is oftentimes the marginalized, those who have been disenfranchised, whether you're talking about black youth, whether you're talking about any community of color, whether you're talking about our Latino brothers and sisters, there have been a lot of uh, marginalization of many communities. And so today, we are deciding to stand together, to come together, to show our support for various bills that are going to be in both the Senate and in the House of Representatives here. And we want to make sure that our voices are heard. We are really represented by a diverse coalition of young people, of activists, of community members, of well-intentioned and concerned citizens. But most importantly, we are diverse and most importantly, we are united. Our unity is our greatest power. And so we understand that if we are not united and we're not standing strong on issues such as these, then we will find ourselves constantly complaining, constantly talking about what should be done and not putting in the work to do and make the changes. So today, we are just from going from chance to change. Today, we are deciding that enough is enough. Today, we are making sure that our level of advocacy goes all the way up into the state house, to the governor's desk. But most importantly, we're not going to stop after today. This is, again, the beginning of a larger movement that has taken place all across the state. And so you can expect to hear other great things and about the works that we're doing, the efforts that we're making, and most importantly, the strides that we're making to make sure that every community has freedom, justice, and equality under the law. So at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce some of our coalition leaders and to be a part of uh, today's effort. We're going to first bring up Mr. Gerald Stansberry of the NAACP. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Gerald Stansbury. I am the Maryland State Conference NAACP president. I am here today, first of all, to give, tell the young folks how proud we are of the work that you have been doing in this effort. There are a lot of bills that's going to be held today in talking about police practices. There are bills that where it allows the, the community to be a part of the process. We need a voice. There's, we need transparency in the police department. All over the country, you're having problems with community, citizens, and policing. So with these policing bills, we know it's not going to be an end to all, but we know it's going to be a start where our community will be able to have a voice, will be able to stand up and say, hey, if this is wrong, there's going to be consequences. So are we asking that our delegates, our, our senators take a favorable approach? They are the lawmakers. We are trusting in them to bring justice to our state of Maryland. So again, I have many members from the uh, Maryland State Conference from all over the state of Maryland here today. These young folks, I am so proud of you. It's your turn. All right, and now we are going to move aside and allow you to do what needs to be done, but we're going to support you. We need to do more and more in our communities to build better relationships with our police department. All policemen are not bad. But those few that are bad create problems for those that are good. So therefore, what we're asking you to do is look at these bills. Favor the bills that's going to bring protection to our community and give them a voice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stansberry. Uh, the next person that we'll have now is Ms. Sarah Love of the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Sarah Love. I'm with the ACLU of Maryland. We stand here to get today united in support of all of the members here and all of those who could not make it here across Maryland who are saying the time for reform is now. The General Assembly is considering a number of bills dealing with police accountability and transparency. And I want to echo what Mr. Stansbury said. This is not an us versus them. This is about holding those people who break the law 
holding them accountable for what they do, holding them accountable to the communities that they serve. It's about the communities participating in the process. It's about everybody working together. So I urge everybody here to raise your voices to the General Assembly and say that it is time for transparency, accountability, and working together. Thank you. Our coalition extends all across the city and all across the city of Baltimore and across the state of Maryland. And one group in particular that we have been working with um, is along with the ACLU, the NAACP, is the group, the Leaders of a Beautiful Struggle, which is a think tank to talk about the direction that the black community can go as we deal with some of these current issues of injustice. So now let us welcome one of the representatives, the CEO of the uh, LBS, uh, Mr. Adam Jackson. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Jackson. I'm the CEO of Leaders of a Beautiful Struggle. Uh, one of the things that's been going on around the United States is us talking about the extrajudicial killing of black folks, you know, talking specifically about people like Mike Brown and Ferguson, we talk about people like Trayvon Martin in uh, Sanford, Florida. But the thing is, we haven't been able to move, people haven't been able to move the conversation with young folks in particular from protests to policy making. And so now this is an opportunity, all the young folks you see behind us are supporters of policy making, making actual substantive change. We move from the streets to the state house. We decided to take it all the way from Baltimore to Annapolis because the problem is, is that when we have these conversations, we don't talk about the specific things we can do with our legislators to change material, the material conditions of black folks. And so when we talk about the statistics, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, jarring. We talk about every, every 28 hours in, around the United States, a black person is killed by a police officer. And so the thing is, we need to force police accountability and we need to figure out the substantive ways that we can engage young people in the conversation. So part of my job as a CEO of this organization is to get young people involved from the streets to the state house to get them involved in policy making. So I'm really proud of this coalition and I'm glad that we're here today to demand that these bills force police accountability and we figure out substantive ways for us to get the community involved with these conversations. Because too often we're kept, the community is kept out of the conversation, it's not transparent. And so now we're actually getting young folks involved and I'm glad to be here and I wanna, I'm glad that we can support this effort. Thank you. And another member of this great coalition that will be speaking now is Ms. Jennifer Valeria of the Casa de Maryland organization. Buenos dias, mi nombre es Jennifer Valera, y yo represento a Casa de Maryland. Good afternoon, my name is Jennifer Valeria, and I'm here on behalf of Casa de Maryland. Yo soy víctima de violencia doméstica. I am a victim of domestic violence. Y después de la policía, del departamento de policía también. And I'm also a victim of the police department. Entiendo las consecuencias del racismo ya que viví una situación con ellos. I understand racism because I lived through racism with the police department. En febrero 21 del 2012, iba manejando mi carro. In February 21 of 2012, I was driving my vehicle. Llevando a mi hijo a la escuela ya que esa mañana se le hizo tarde y perdió el bus. I was taking my child to school because he missed the bus that morning. Paramos en un Royal Farm a hacer una compra. We stopped in a row of farms to get some things. Y cuando salimos de ahí, tratamos de tomar la vía nuevamente. And after leaving the Royal Farms, we headed back on the road. Me paró la policía sin razón. The police officer stopped me for no reason. No me dijo por qué me paró. He never told me why he stopped me. Él solo me paró, eh, me preguntó por mi licencia. He only stopped me and asked me for my license. Y esto lo preguntó muchas veces. And he continued to ask for my license continuously. Sin, sin razón alguna. Without any kind of reason. Él solo quería saber si tenía yo una licencia o no. He only wanted to know if I had a license or not. Haciéndome creer que solamente porque soy hispano. He was letting, he was, in the way he was speaking, it was making me seem like he only stopped me because I looked Hispanic. Después de esto, mi hijo, mi hija y yo. After this, my son, my daughter and I. Perdimos la credibilidad en el departamento de policía. We lost our trust in the police community. Porque nosotros creemos que ellos son para tomar cuidado de cada persona en peligro. Because we see them as someone who is here to take care of us when we are in time of danger. Yo no soy un criminal. I am not a criminal. Y no tengo ningún mal record. And I do not have a criminal record. Yo solamente soy una trabajadora muy dura. I am only a hard working worker. Eh, madre soltera. I am a single mother. Y soy Latina. And I am Latina. 
Yo lo único que quiero es que el departamento de policía I only want that the police department sea justo is just con cada persona with every person no importa el color de su piel without uh, despite the color of their skin. Gracias. Thank you. The unfortunate part is, is that we're hearing too many stories like Jennifer and so many others. You have the West Family Coalition. You have the story of Abdul Salam and many other victims whose lives have been lost in the hands of police custody. And so today, our coalition is going to stand on one foundation, the foundation of justice and the foundation of truth. And if the state lawmakers aren't on that same foundation, then that's going to be a continuing problem to really restore the faith that the citizens of Baltimore and the state of Maryland has in its police, uh, its police force. It's important that the citizens should not be afraid of those who are supposed to serve and protect them. And so today, we are going to, we're standing here as a united front with the hope, with the demand that we will not continue to allow brutality to exist in the community, and furthermore, to not allow, not allow accountability to not be present for all the police officers. So family, thank you so much uh, for all of those who were able to come out for today's press conference. Um, if we have any individual questions, we certainly want to thank Delegate Jill Carter for sponsoring the great many packages of the, the package of bills dealing with police brutality and police accountability. And we want to thank Delegate Victor Ramirez and many others who have been instrumental in making sure that our voices are put into some type of legislative agenda to create some type of policy change. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have any individual questions for any of the coalition members or any folks, please let us know. Thank you so much for your time.